And we are studying the Word Monday through Friday, every morning, 10 o'clock. Got a little bit of a late start today, so please forgive us. Um, we, we, get, are studying. we just got every, <laughs> gave everybody time to get some more coffee. And, and we have a couple of <laughs> uh, grandkids staying with us. So um, we are happy to be back with you again Always today. Good. And uh, we're getting to study the Word. And we studied last week on taking your place in Christ. And so this week we're studying the same message, just we call it identification with Christ. So we're offering a new book, a new book this week called The Power of Identification with Christ. And you can see that Trina has hers all marked up. I the, know. I got the pages turned over. Turned over, turned down. This is, this is the notes to all the messages. So taking your place in Christ, that book, you can get that book free last week or this week. And then this book is called The Power of Identification with Christ. You get it free this week. So all you have to do is go to markhankins.org and... Um, Order the free book, and while you're there, you can download the messages on who you are in Christ, your identification with Christ, and uh, that's the subject we're studying. So, we're happy also to have um, our board members, uh, Jim and Ann, Jim and Wanda Quillen. Quillen. God bless y'all from Alabama. Thank you for being a blessing. And also, Ann yeah. Adcox, mm -hmm. and uh, from Tennessee, and then her husband, Cliff is present with the Lord in heaven. So he's cheering us on from the other side. So we thank you, Ann Adcox, and we thank the Quillens as our board members for being a part of everything that we're doing in preaching the word here and around the world. So God bless all of you abundantly. We're glad that you're able to tune in for the Bible study and for our Bible school. And uh, when you make a comment, we encourage you to make a comment. And when you make a comment, just say what city or what state or what country, what nation that you're from. And that helps us to kind of keep a record of where everybody's watching from. So we're uh, blessed. Yes, we are. And it's so fun to go back and I look at the comments and see everyone checking in and saying hello and everything. It just makes us feel so connected, especially during these isolation times. Praise God, we're coming out. A lot of states are free to have church now. Yeah. But uh, during all these times, we understand we're a family mm. and we're cheering one another on. It's good to see you. Yes, and so we're surrounded uh, by pictures of uh, pastors and friends from different countries, different nations where we've been preaching really for the last 44 years. <laughs> 44 years, wow. <laughs> so uh, we've been preaching around the world for a long time. I know, so, I see India. We see India, yes. we, see, uh, we see Nigeria. Nigeria and Vietnam. See and Cornelius from we down. We see uh, Nagaland where yes. we have um, uh, the uh, Rottens. Rottens, because uh -huh. I get the Romix from Colombia. We have them on here, the Romix, uh, Rama. Then we have uh, um, Jeppe and John Routen from uh, India, India, which is Nagaland, which is a part mm -hmm. of India, which is close to Nepal. Then we have Nepal. <coughs> so they were instrumental in getting our books translated into Hindi. And so uh, we have that language. Yeah, there and may so be a many different there. So, uh, yep, they're right behind you over there. <laughs> praise the Lord. So, we're kind of getting a slow start here today, but we'll get right into the word in just a moment. But if you have your Bible, go ahead and open up to 2 Corinthians 5 17. We're talking about your identification with Christ and who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. So, if you have your Bible, open 2 Corinthians 5 17. And we're studying what it means to be a new creature, a new creation in Christ. And so it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. New. Amen. In other words, the word new means new in kind, new in quality, means unheard of before. So you're not just a forgiven sinner. You're not just, well, someday I'm going to go to heaven. But you are a new kind of creature that never existed before. In other words, you've been born again, Yes. received eternal life, your spirit has eternal life, and there's nothing left of what you used to be. <laughs> Amen. The comparison is to Jesus. As new, he's a firstborn of a new creation, yeah. and we are part of that new creation. Yeah, it's a completely so, different 
kind of person. It is just as we study identification with Christ, really we get into the study of how God produced the new creature. Right. Right. So we can, we can make the confession, I'm a new creature in Christ. Or we can make the confession, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, or I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. But when you look at identification, that kind of tells you how God's method of how he produced the new creature. The more you understand the method, the more confidence and uh, enjoyment of this new creation you can, you can walk in. I tell you what, mm. when you see that the old is gone, the new is here, and when I see Jesus, he, I look like him. Yeah. And when God sees me, he sees me in Christ. Yeah. So we're a whole new creation, new kind of person that uh, has dominion and authority in this world. So we are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus. Or we say God put into Christ everything mm -hmm. he wanted us to have. Our identification with Christ simply means um, God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. In other words... Our identification with Christ means that Christ took us to the cross with him and we have the same identical place where we were crucified with him, we died with him, and we were made alive with him. So this is on your identification with Christ means to consider and treat as one and the same. To consider and treat as one and the same. So what happened in the death of Christ or on the cross, Galatians 2.20, mm -hmm. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Or Paul says, Christ took me to the cross with him. Or the Message Bible says, I identified myself completely with Christ. In other words, who I am is totally determined by what happened on the cross. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith mm -hmm. of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul uh, spoke those words from his place of revelation. You know, we talk about how mm -hmm. he ascended up into heaven and he got uh, uh, a vision, a revelation of everything that was accomplished mm -hmm. in redemption. And then he came back down. And so he speaks from this place of revelation, which means... You know, we talked about praying the prayer mm. in Ephesians, the first chapter, asking God to give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation yeah. in the knowledge of God. Mm. God wants us to know and see and experience firsthand, individually, every one of us, exactly what Jesus did for us and God did for us in the cross, yeah. the death, burial, and the resurrection. The tremendous power that God used when he raised Christ from the dead greatest display of power in the history of the universe, he says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and that power was released towards us who believe. So the definition of the believer now is what God did in Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection when God raised Christ from the dead. So Paul's letters or Paul's revelation, he says, I'm praying for you as believers mm -hmm. that the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with light, that God give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so you will see, you'll know what happened from the cross to the throne. Praise God. What so happened? Where are we going to begin right now? And so Paul says, you were there. Or we were we there. We were there. So Galatians 2.20, again, look at that again. Yeah. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So you see, really, uh, substitution Everything Jesus did, he did it for us, mm -hmm. and it's set to the credit of our account just like we were there. We were there. We were there, and we used to sing that song on Easter. Yeah. Uh, when we were growing up, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when he's laid into the tomb? Were you there when he's raised from the dead? Sometimes it causes me to tremble. And then the song that Brother Copeland sings, is when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. And so what happened on the cross is Jesus took our place and he was our substitute. Right. He was made to be sin for us in our behalf mm -hmm. and he redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse 
for us in our behalf that we might be redeemed. He purchased our freedom from the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. So everything Jesus did, he did it for us in our behalf so we were identified with him. Praise the Lord. There's no way he, Jesus could have died without our death. Yeah. There's no way he, he became one with us. Isaiah 53 is so beautiful yeah. that he was despised and rejected of men, mm -hmm. a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. It wasn't his sorrow, it was our sorrow. Mm -hmm. He was acquainted with our grief. Yet we did esteem him mm -hmm. stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for yeah. our iniquities, Amen. the chastisement for our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. What a point of uh, our meeting and Jesus mm -hmm. meeting us at the point of our greatest need and sorrow. And by his stripes mm -hmm. we are healed and made whole. And made whole. And then First Peter says, by his stripes we were healed. So you see what Jesus has already done for yeah. us in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, we were identified with him. So just to use the word identification and understand what it means, it means to consider and treat as one and the same mm -hmm. or as I identical. That means in the death of Christ and in the resurrection of Christ. Ephesians chapter two, verse four through six says, but God right. who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead yes. in sin, he quickened, or the word quickened means he made us alive together with Christ and hath raised us up together with him and made us sit down together with him in heavenly places. If you go over to Ephesians 1, where he made us sit together with Christ, far above all principality and power and might, dominion, and every name is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. <laughs> but all things under his feet gave him to be the head over all things through the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. So you can see that we've been made alive together, identified with Christ, raised up together, Amen. and seated together with him in heavenly places. And that place in Christ, seated with him, is a place of authority, yes. is a place of blessing. Yes. That's why Ephesians 1, 3 says that we are blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing heaven itself enjoys. Amen, I love that Ephesians 1 prayer and he raised Christ up to the highest pinnacle. Yeah. But Mark, you always preach the and you gospel. And you. And you, the next chapter, Ephesians 2, 1. Yeah. And you who were dead, Praise the Lord. trespasses Amen. and sin, God raised up. Wow, so <laughs> when you see Jesus raised from the dead, so you have to ha know what happened on the cross. In other words, the significance of the resurrection is determined by the nature of his death. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? The significance of the resurrection of Christ to us as believers that Jesus is alive, he's raised from the dead, he's triumphant. What happened on the cross determines the significance of that to us. Why? Well, because if Jesus' death was simply the death of a martyr, or if Jesus would have simply died his death, then when he's raised from the dead, then you just say, well, look at Jesus. Right. Go, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look, Jesus is amazing. But what Paul says, Jesus certainly is amazing, but what Paul said is what Jesus did on the cross is he took our place, died our death, he took our curse, and then when he was raised from the dead, we were made alive together with him and raised up together with him and made to sit Amen. down together with him. And Jesus is called the firstborn from the dead. One translation there, it says, we quote, that he's the first man to enter the death experience and master it. <laughs> you know, you talk about, in the, uh, I think A.J. Gordon was talking about the phrases in Christ, and God manifest in the mm -hmm. flesh. And you know, a lot of the world religions say that Jesus is only a prophet. Yeah. You know, they don't recognize him as, as God manifest mm -hmm. in the flesh, but Jesus overcame death. He overcame mm -hmm. our position, our condition yeah. as a man, God man. Mm -hmm. Praise God. He overcame right there. So Jesus is not just a teacher. No, he's not just uh, a he's teacher. He's not just a prophet. 
He is Lord. And that's how you receive salvation is you confess Jesus as Lord. He is absolute master of death, hell, and the grave. Jesus is Lord. And we were identified with him. Everything he did, yeah. he did it for us. So that's the kind and the quality of the new life that is given to the new creation is the very same life that God used when he raised Christ from the dead. The same identical life that raised, Praise so that God. would be triumphant, resurrection life, devil defeating life, mm -hmm. uh, hell defeating life, <laughs> sickness dissolving life. It's the God kind of life and it's really God's new love life, new covenant life from the blood of Jesus. We have been redeemed and we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, everything. Now, you got to read Isaiah 26 real quickly here because when he says old things have passed away, everything has become new. Then Isaiah chapter 26, when he says old things, the old man was crucified with Christ. And so, uh, have you found Isaiah 26? I, I uh, have it. It's right, right here in it, this give book. Give it a read. And uh, wow, this is so powerful. It says, Lord, you will ordain peace, God's favor and blessing, mm -hmm. both temporal and spiritual for us. For you have also wrought in us and for us all our works, O Lord, our God. Listen, other masters besides you have ruled us, ruled mm -hmm. over us, but we will acknowledge and mention your name mm -hmm. only. They, the former tyrant masters, are dead. They shall not live and reappear. They are powerless ghosts. They shall not rise and come back. Therefore, you have visited and made an end of them and caused every memory of, memory of them, every trace of their supremacy to wow. perish. Wow, Woo. that's pretty amazing. Now, you watch that because I'm going to read it in the King James. It's Isaiah 26, verse 13 and 14. And he says, Isaiah 26, verse 13 and 14, O Lord our God, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us, but by thee only will we mention thy name. And then he says in verse 14, the other tyrant masters, right. the other things like have tried to rule and, and, and uh, have dominion over us or control us. He said that they are dead. They shall not live and yours says they shall not reappear. reappear. So he says they are dead. They shall not reappear. They are deceased. They will not rise again. Aha. Uh -huh. And then he says, therefore you have visited, destroyed them, and made all their memory to perish. Woo. In other words, God saying, even the memory of your old sinful self and the old identity of the way you used to live, the way you used to be, all of your failures, all your sins and guilt and shame right. through the power of the blood of Jesus. He said that has been totally destroyed. You're a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Satan shall not have dominion over you. Sickness cannot dominate you. Depression cannot dominate you. <laughs> Those old tyrant Amen. masters are dead. They will not reappear. One translation says they are powerless ghosts. ghosts. That's what the Amplified, uh -huh. powerless ghosts. So don't, don't allow your mind to become a haunted house of some <laughs> powerless ghosts that try to reappear and, and torment you because by the power of the blood of Jesus, even the memory Mm -hmm. That where God said, I don't even remember mm -hmm. your sin. I totally forgotten that right. any sin you've done. Right. So he says the blood of Jesus has the power to remove sin consciousness, put a righteousness consciousness on the inside of you. So you don't have to keep thinking about the memory of those things in the past because mm -hmm. of the blood Jesus Wow, says he whom the Son has set free. It's free and So Jesus, <laughs> he didn't just set you one third free or one half free. He said, I'm going to make you so free you won't Hallelujah. even remember. In other <laughs> words, you'll go forward with such victory, the past will have no influence on you whatsoever. You know, the other day I was just talking to uh, one of my friends and she was telling me some haunting dreams she was having from the past, you know, some events that had happened to her that were very unfortunate and people that had done her wrong, been so cruel in her life. Yeah. And she had woken up, you know. Have a nightmare. Yes. And it was so real. Mm -hmm. And I gave her this scripture, 
She said, let me write that down. Let me write that down because, you know, she was taking that word and overcoming wow. with the word. You shall know the truth mm. and the truth will make you wow. free. Jesus didn't do a halfway job. Yes. He finished it. Wow. And so Praise really, um, you can get Isaiah 26. It's right here, written here. Or you can write that down, Isaiah 26. Verse 13 and, and 14, in this book, knowing our old man, the old person we used to be, was crucified with Christ so that sin shall not have dominion over you. And you reckon and acknowledge who you are and what you have in Christ. Amen. And so you can just get the book absolutely free. Just go to markhankins.org. We'll send you this book on identification with Christ. You look up that Isaiah 26. You find out what's talking about through the power <laughs> of the blood of Jesus. Man, you'll put your book down. And somebody said, I'm ready to run right now. They already put it on <laughs> while they were watching the program. And you'll jump up and run around the room. Uh, Dad Hagen said, if you do it at night, make sure you turn the light on. But anyway, <laughs> he said, he got up and started running around the room rejoicing yeah. because Jesus has set us free. In other words, once you know the truth, then every lie, every suggestion, every feeling of the enemy Praise that comes God. against your mind, That's against right. your life, by the power of the blood of Jesus, that the blood of Jesus is not just the blood of his cross. It is the blood of the new creation. It is the blood of the resurrection and the triumph of Christ. In other words, his blood right now speaks of your 100% victory and freedom, but you'll have to exercise faith in that blood and you'll have to have a bold confession of faith in the blood and resist the devil with that confession. Amen. Uh, Revelation 12, uh, yeah. 10, 11, you know, the accuser, it says the accuser day and night accusations launched at us. He hates people mm -hmm. and he knows things about our past and whatever and, and he'll just launch those attacks, mm -hmm. accusations, fiery darts of doubt and fear. Wow. And But I tell you what, we overcome with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Because really there's different kinds of devils and demons and evil spirits and Paul list uh, in Ephesians 6, 12, four different classes right. of devils, demons, evil spirits. The first thing Jesus said, uh, when you become a believer in Mark chapter 16, he said, these signs will follow those that believe. And he said, first thing you're going to do is in my name, you will cast out devils. That means you have authority over the devil and demons and evil spirits. And so one of the wow. one kind, and there's different spirit of infirmity and spirit of fear, but there's also one kind of a spirit called a familiar spirit right. who knows that demon knows things, has information about you and about your past. And he'll try to bring up pictures and he'll try to arrange all kinds of circumstances and try to, he's just familiar with you, but you're a new creature in Christ and the devil knows he has no dominion over you. So you say, no, nope, Mr. Devil, I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus and Jesus has set me free and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. <laughs> That's the Christian life that God wants us to enjoy, a happy life. A life of dominion. You know, you can open the door. To, you don't leave the door open at night mm -hmm. at your house, do you? And just let anything wander mm -hmm. in. No, you lock it up. And that's what we have to do. We have to lock up our uh, thoughts mm -hmm. and say, no, devil, you're not, no, those accusations, those memories, mm -hmm. you're not coming in here. I have authority. Here. Yeah. So I was just watching the news uh, the other day. And so because of all the things going on in the States right now, then they are releasing a lot of criminals from mm -hmm. prison. And so they're releasing some pretty bad criminals right. that have a real history in, in these criminals. So they just said, well, we're going to set them free. And they're finding out within a day, within hours or days, they go back and uh, do the same crime again or murder somebody or hurt somebody. So God's not just interested in setting criminals free. He didn't just set you free. He changed your heart, changed your nature, made you Amen. a new creation. So there's no record you ever did anything wrong because of the blood. He's made you a new creature in Christ. So you don't have to go back and live in the same circumstances and let the devil dominate you. Because you didn't just come out of bondage. You're a different person. You're Amen. a new creature in Christ with a new nature, a new life, and old things have passed, passed away. away. And only Jesus can do that for you. <laughs> only Jesus can do that for you. 
put a new heart and a new spirit in I you. think you're about to run, Mark. I'm telling you, I'm happy. I'm telling you, think about what, what God, and I remember just as a teenager when yeah. I saw the, who, who you are in Christ, that you're a new creature in Christ, and the, and the reality of the new birth, that you've been born again, refathered, new life, Old things are passed away. Your and you've spirit never let is shown to Christ. No, it's a, it is a day, spiritual reality. He still is meditating on the same things. I remember uh, seeing your little notebook yeah. at 17 years. It's yellow. Little spiral notebook. Mm. And he started writing who he is in Christ scriptures yeah. in his little scrawly, mm. right? Your handwriting. My, my uh, long hand. Long hand, yeah. Your left hand. And... Uh, that's how you overcame at 17. Yeah. But here you are, I don't know if I want to say how old you are today, but we still overcome with the blood mm. and the word of our testimony in this revelation of who we are in Christ. Wow, so now let's look at, because you've got to write the scripture down, Isaiah 26 that we quoted, and you can get the book, but Isaiah 26, and you declare, that you will no longer be haunted by powerless ghosts Amen. of memories from the past and even temptations and struggles and feelings that come against you, suggestions from the enemy by the power of the blood of Jesus. You say, I'm not the same person I used to be. I'm a new creature in Christ. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Satan cannot dominate me. And Trina, you mentioned something some time ago about uh, that uh, in the Old Testament, uh, the believers that when they got sick, they would actually change their name. Yeah. Yeah, now how did that, how did that work, you said? You know, uh, there's a book called the Tehillim, yeah. and it's, it's written, it's a Hebrew uh, scholar, written by Hebrew scholars, and they're commenting on the book of Psalms. Well, there's a note in that book that Billy Brim pointed out to yeah. us. And so, if someone was ill, sick, they would change their name. They would pray over that person. Then they would change their name wow. so okay. that their identity would be changed. Yeah. And no longer would they be like oh. the one who has cancer or the uh, victim of whatever it is. Yeah. They, they completely change the name wow. and pray a prayer over them. So that everyone, they saw themselves different Mm. They call themselves healed, wow. but others around them would call themselves so, call them healed. So they would no longer see themselves by the old identity mm -hmm. of the old person that was sick. They would see themselves as a new person that is well and strong. Amen. It's like that old. So they would just change their name. Yeah, we used to sing a song in our Assemblies of God Church. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's, and it's mine. mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> God sees us. He's changed that's part our name. Of the new creation, he calls you blessed. He a calls you name. righteous. He calls you overcomer. Wow. So now God does that a lot, really, in the scriptures, that He'll change someone's name, yes. their identity, right? Yes. And so He did that with Abraham and Sarah. And he changed uh, Abram to Abraham. Mm. Now, he, they pointed this out when I was in Bible college, that when, they, they ch when God changed Abram's name to Abraham, which means father of many, that in the Old Testament, the name of God was so holy that they wouldn't say his whole name. They would only pronounce just a part of it and go, the sound. The H. Sound. H. Yeah. Maybe like Jehovah. Uh -huh. So his name is so holy, they thought, well, they wouldn't pronounce his name. So what God did with Abraham is he literally put his name in the middle of Abraham. Ooh, so, when so he changed Abraham's total identity. <laughs> so when Abraham said, my name is Abraham, he, he said, was bold. God is in the middle of me Woo. and the promises of God will be performed. So when God changed Abraham, then he said, you're the father of many. I perform it by my power and my ability. And so he changed his name and changed his identity. And Abraham 
became the father of faith. We still walk in the same steps of Abraham and his faith, it says in Romans chapter four. Yeah. So to walk that God calls things which be not as though they were. So he's calling Abraham, Abraham, father of many. Then Abraham started calling himself, I'm father of many. He didn't have any kids. <laughs> and Sarah, she started laughing. Yeah. Her name was changed from Sarai's to yeah. Sarah. Sarah. Got an H and there's in her the name. H at the end. Sarah, God, amen. He caused her to laugh. He made her the mother yes. of a little boy. Yes, uh, Isaac and I laughter. believe we're getting some H's in her name. Yeah, so God <laughs> changes your identity. Amen. So you no longer see yourself the way you used to see yourself. You now see yourself in Christ in the middle of what God's grace has Ooh. done for you through the blood of Jesus. So I encourage you to get the book, uh, The Power of Identification with Christ. You can go to markhankins.org and the book is absolutely free and you can download the messages on identification with Christ, see yourself different and declare who you are in Christ every single day. And I'm glad that you're, you're able to just join mm -hmm. us and stick with it. If you missed some of these programs, go back to yesterday, the day before, last week, and watch all of them until you become consumed with the reality that you're a new creature in Christ, that your whole identity has been changed by Jesus Christ. He literally changes everything. You're not what your mama made you. You're not what your daddy made you. You're not what circumstances or failures or experiences made you. You right. are the workmanship of God created in Christ, in the death and resurrection yes. of Christ through the blood of Jesus, unto good works which God has before ordained that you should walk in them. Wow. In other words, your identity mm -hmm. connected to your destiny. And I said yesterday, if the enemy can challenge your identity, then he can hinder your destiny. So you must see who you are in Christ, that you are a new creature. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy <laughs> nation. In other words, you're not trying to be, and John said, now we are the sons of God. We are the sons of God. We're not trying to be. And so the word of God, especially Paul's and John, the New Testament is so full of who we are. We can find ourselves in there. Yes. Um, it's like the the little boy that uh, he, I don't know if I can tell the story right, but uh, the man that walked up to the little boy and he didn't know what town he was in. And he says, do you know where I am? I think this is how it goes. It, the he little said, boy that was right. lost. Oh, oh no, that's a different Yeah, one. right there you are. Oh yeah, <laughs> the little boy was sitting on the porch story yeah. goes kind of like this and a, a man was in a town, he was lost trying to find his way around. So he drove up in the front yard, asked the little boy on the front porch, he said, he said, uh, where am I? <laughs> little boy said, right there you are. <laughs> so <clears throat> when you see it, the in Christ scriptures, instead of being lost, you just say right there I am, I'm in right Christ. I'm a new creature in Christ. Amen. So talking about God changing identities, we have Abraham, we got Sarah. We Gideon. also have Jacob. Jacob. Whoa, what kind of guy was Jacob? What a change. What did God do with Jacob? He was a trickster. <laughs> Man, and God totally changed him, named him Israel. Wow. wow. So God changes names, changes identities. And he took Simon and said, I'm changing you from being a uh, flopping around, wishy-washy, always up and down and confused. He said, I'm making you a rock. I'm making you a rock. I'm making you a piece of the rock of Christ, a revelation of who Jesus is. And so Peter had to see himself now in Christ, in the light of who Jesus is. Right. Praise God. I'm so glad he did. Yes. Because he wrote his Do books. Do you know the best one? <clears throat> oh, the best one yes, is, is the Apostle Paul. Paul. Saul on the road to Damascus, Acts chapter 9, Acts 22, what Acts 26. Change. What about a radical change? And so somebody said 2 Corinthians 5, 17 is really Paul just describing his experience with Jesus Christ. Wow. In other words, on the road to Damascus, Saul, Pharisee, persecuting Christians, and Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, 
knocked him down and said every one of them, we were all <laughs> falling to the earth. You know, people get upset. They say, oh, I'm upset if sometimes people fall out in church. Listen, when Jesus shows up, said all of them <laughs> fell out. <laughs> and even when he was raised from the dead, said all the soldiers fell out. So enough of the glory it's of God comes God. around and you're not going to be able to stand up. And so <clears throat> Saul and all of them fell to the ground. And Saul said, who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. So his first revelation of Jesus is that he was persecuting Christians, and Jesus and those believers are one. If you hurt them, you're hurting me. So Jesus himself identified himself with the Christians. With the Christians. Wow. Actually, all of our identification mm -hmm. started with God. God initiated, the grace of God initiated identification. And then we, by faith, say, Lord, I agree with you that I am a new creature in Christ. So you can see that, that Jesus identified with the Christians. And you can see when he said, who are you, Lord? What happened there? Well, I'm Jesus, whom you persecuted. He said, who are you? What do you want me to do? And that so changed his life that we said the other day that one writer um, said it this way, P.C. Nelson, in his book, yeah. he said, he said, all of Christianity stands on two pillars, the resurrection of Christ and the, when the apostle Paul was converted or born again. In other words, if Christ is not raised from the dead, yes. then our faith is in vain. Right. But the apostle Paul was the translator, the explainer of the gospel of what happened in the death and resurrection of Christ. So Paul must have seen Jesus because he was so radically changed. He was a proud Pharisee. He's persecuting Christians. So for him to radically change like that, only Jesus alive could do that. So he must have seen Jesus. So Paul's conversion is a proof of the resurrection of Christ. That's, a, that's Im oh, the impact of that revelation. Wow, it's and continuing. So his name was Saul. But when he met Jesus, <laughs> it his conversion, we say it knocked the S off the front of his name and put a P there. In other words, he's Paul now. <laughs> but really, it's later on in Acts 13. Right, right. At Paul, Paul. Now we go from Saul to Paul. He's a totally different man. He's a new creature in Christ. Well, Paul speaks with great authority because he knows how much he changed. And it's interesting that he was blinded by the glory mm. of God Wow! Uh, for three days in the dark, so dark, he had been blinded by the light from heaven. Wow. And in that time, don't you know he was, he was trying to figure out what was going on, who this Jesus wow. was. What a turning point. You know, God is not finished changing people's lives. I believe that as we pray for others, as we pray that God gives them a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. God is continually to this day, so-called mm -hmm. knocking people off their high horses wow. and giving them a revelation of himself, wow. and, and changing Paul, destinies. Paul said that in Philippians 3, that I may know him. He said, I've lost everything. He said, to be found in Christ, to know who I am in Christ. He said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, fellowship of his sufferings conformed unto his death. And then he says, and this one thing I do, I forget those things. It's amazing how much progress we yeah. could make if we would forget those things which are past, those things which are behind. So Paul said, I do it. And somebody said, well, I just can't forget. Yeah, you can because the blood of Jesus has the power to remove that from your memory. That's what Isaiah 26 said. Right. In other words, the memory will be broken. And the power of that memory, it's a powerless ghost. But by the blood of Jesus, your spirit is free and your mind is free. Amen. Your memory is free. And so uh, Paul there, a new creature in Christ, and here's what he says. I have not yet apprehended what I have been apprehended of. Now, what does that mean? What he's saying is on the road to Damascus, he was apprehended. He was arrested. Words, he was arrested. <laughs> and so God can arrest those people 
in your life that you are praying for and your family members Amen. that you're believing and you plead the blood of Jesus and God can arrest them. Stop them in their tracks. Man, I got arrested when I was 17. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure my mom was praying and I'm like, ah, I got arrested. So God can arrest people that are doing things, going certain directions. And, and he apprehended Paul. Yes. And Paul said, the grace of God arrested me. I have not yet gotten a hold of what got a hold of me. That's the grace of God. That's the love of Christ. In the middle of going the wrong direction, and, he, and Jesus said, why do you keep kicking against the pricks or the goads? In other words, what, what Paul was doing, or Saul at that time, mm -hmm. um, that he's uh, persecuting and so Christians. And so when they had a, um, oxen right. and they would try to get them to change direction, then they would take a sharp, long stick and poke them like that and try to get them to turn directions. And so that's the picture that Jesus said, why do you keep kicking? You're only hurting yourself when you keep kicking against what God is trying to change in your life. Praise God. I believe God's uh, speaking to us today. He's involved with our lives. He's involved with those who you're praying for. And he's got some uh, pricks. He's pricking them. Yeah. Now get your attention. Get your attention. Get in their attention. The loved ones that you have, or maybe you, you might be listening. You might be the one that's kicking against the plan of God for your life. Mm -hmm. But Jesus loves you, and he's praying for you, and you have a place in his plan. Yes. In his kingdom. He's got a future for you. Wow. A new identity. He makes everything <laughs> new. He makes everything new. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So in Christ, through the power of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ, through the power of the blood of Jesus, what happened on the cross, the blood of his cross, and Paul said, I know this, Romans 6, 6, I know this, the old person I used to be died there. So every time you're having any challenges, you go to the blood of the cross and you say, Jesus took my old man, the old person I used to be, to the cross and the power of the blood of the cross, and I died there, my old sinful self. And the other translations say, my former evil identity has been executed. In other words, there's power in the blood of Jesus and the cross to bring an end to those things that have been controlling your life. He said, my former evil identity has been executed and my old rebel self was exterminated. It's gone. Gone. He said, now you know this because of revelation knowledge through the blood of Jesus, through you seeing what happened in the x-ray, see what happened in the death of Christ. And Paul says, we were there. We died with him made alive with him. Praise God. Those old evil voices, desires. those desires. One translation says, my, my old sin loving nature was crucified with Christ. Wow. Well, that means it's you'll never enjoy nature. sin again. <laughs> <laughs> that don't mean that you won't have no trouble. That don't mean you may not be tempted, but, but the power of sin it's is gone. broken. It's broken. And sin shall not have dominion over you, and Satan cannot have dominion over you. You know, Paul was so changed, wasn't he? He was so hateful. He was breathing out hate. Legalistic religion. Murder. Self-righteousness. Oh, oh, Jesus knocked him down. <coughs> I, I think <laughs> self-righteousness really makes Christians, you know, mean. You know, they're like, <laughs> oh, I did this and I didn't do that. But Paul said, not having my own righteousness, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, through faith in his blood. That is the power of the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Praise Christ God. today. Power in heaven. There's power over Satan and over the accuser. And there's power in your heart. The blood reaches into your heart and silences the voice of self-condemnation and cleanses your conscience. So now a new heart, a new spirit, Amen. a new creation in Christ with a new nature. And it's God's love nature on the inside of you. Praise God. 
That reminds me of the verse here in Isaiah 43, and it says, Do not earnestly remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. If we're new creatures in Christ, mm. we don't want to think about all the old ways we used to be. Don't yeah. even consider that that's your wow. future. He said, behold, yeah. I'm doing a new thing. That word behold means look, look right now. Yeah. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? Will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I love this verse. Ah, God is changing everything. I remember not the former things, but actually, what's the other uh, translation message Bible it's says? It's a message Bible. Forget, forget about, about what it. has happened. Just forget about Don't it. Don't keep going over old history. Yeah. God said, I'm doing a new thing in your life. In other words, let God do a new thing. Not only are you a new creature in Christ, but the new creation is constantly giving birth to new things in your life and new doors and new opportunity and new blessing is coming your way because you're a new creation and you're the workmanship of God created in Christ. So you're not stuck in a rut of the past. God's got new things and new yeah. doors and new blessing coming to you like you've never seen before. So he says, don't even remember the former thing. Forget about it. He said, behold, And look. people for years and years and years and years will keep thinking about bringing up what happened, what Talking should happen, about what it. people did, what they didn't do, what their mama did, what their daddy didn't do, and they keep holding grudges and keep thinking about it and torn, and they're stuck. But by the power of the blood of Jesus, God Amen. said, forget about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus and by the blood, forget about it. Forget about what happened. Look to Jesus and see what happened on the cross. See what the blood has done for you. You're a totally new creature in Christ. And he said, don't keep going over old history. Paul said, I don't even, I, I don't even remember those things. I don't remember it. Forget about it. Amen. And there's a point where you have to, if somebody's done something against you, you identify with Jesus, whereas on the cross, mm -hmm. he looked at those who were, mm -hmm. you know, they were pulling his beard, they were speaking mm -hmm. and throwing the, and spitting at him, all those things. Um, he said, Father, forgive them. Yeah. They don't know what they do. And so whatever has <laughs> happened to you, whatever people have done to you is wrong. But you say, like Jesus, say, Jesus, I'm identifying with you. Forgive yeah. them. I release them today, right now. Forgive them. I put them in your hands. Mm. I plead the blood. And what that does, it closes the door on the enemy. You know, Mark, when I was a teenager, I was at my house, and I was walking up the stairs to our back. Uh, I was in the basement walking up the stairs. At the door, there was a door at the back. Uh, the back door was right there at the top of the stairs. Well... As I got to the top of the stairs, I looked, the screen door was closed, the regular door was open, and there was a man, a stranger, standing at the back door, and I didn't know who he was, I'd never seen him, I thought, this is bad. He, he was look kind of mean. He looked like he was wanting to get in the house, and, and nobody was home, just Patsy and I. And I just walked straight to that door, closed the door, and locked it. And then wow. he looked at me, turned around, and walked away. Mm. And, you know, he could have been there for harm, he, evil, you know. He had no good planned. But when I closed the door, he turned around and walked away. Today, I just, this story comes back to me mm -hmm. because I believe some of you are closing the door, yeah. asking God to forgive those people that have hurt you or wronged you. Close the door on the thief, mm -hmm. close the door on the accuser, close the door, it's Amen. the devil, it's not people that have hurt you, it's the enemy, he hates yeah. you. Yeah. Praise God, and then open up your heart and the power of God, yes. the power yeah. of resurrection yeah. will flood your heart and wow. all things will become new. Yeah, that's the love of God, that's the blood of Jesus, is you just close that door and the devil will have to turn and walk away. Turn and walk away. Wow. So remember not the former things. That's a pretty simple, clear message. Forget about it. Forget about it. Don't keep going over old history. You're a new creature in Christ. Our old man was crucified with Christ. This is our identification with Christ. Our old, former, evil identity 
was put to death. Those things are dead and gone. And he says in Isaiah 26, they will not rise again. He said that Satan's dominion is broken Amen. and you are free by the blood of Jesus and don't allow the devil to harass your mind because you have authority over him in the name and by the blood of Jesus. And so you declare, I'm a new creature in Christ. In Galatians 2.20, when Paul said, I was crucified with Christ, the, the message Bible, it says, I identified myself completely with Christ. In other words, God is totally changing the way you see yourself, mm -hmm. that even like he would give you a new identity, that you no longer see yourself as the one who was a victim, no longer see yourself as the one who was abused. You see yourself now in Christ Jesus more than a conqueror. Ooh, you see yourself in him. And he's looking pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking pretty good. See who you are in Christ. And this is the power of the word of God and the power of what happened from the cross to the throne. This is the power of what we would call Paul's revelation. Paul's letters contain the thoughts that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. They're the advanced teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you go from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John from just kind of just following Jesus and we all continue to follow Jesus to now a little different picture of we are in Christ and he's in us and we are identified with Christ. So you see who you are in him and then your confession, the word confession of faith there, the word confession means to say the same thing. So you're just simply saying, I'm going to say the same thing because I have a new identity. I'm, I'm joined to Christ, have the same identical life, Man. same identical power, new nature. So because God says I have the same identical life, then I'm going to say the same thing. So I'm just going to agree with God. Even if it seems like failure is all around you, Make a bold confession that Jesus is my Lord and I am a new creature in Christ. That old things have passed Amen. away and everything has become new. Your confession of Jesus is Lord is so powerful. And you, when we just voice that, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. comes on that confession. He comes to you and this power that raised Christ from the dead is activated and released wherever you are, just in a tiny second. Wow, praise the Lord. Wow, Everything we, changes. We are so thankful that you're able to join Amen. us today. And if you missed yesterday, it seems like every day there's kind of a different facet of identification with Christ comes out. If you're a preacher, you're a teacher, man, you can preach on all this and your illustrations are in all the different messages last week and this week. And so your uh, confession, right. Hold fast to your confession of faith, no matter how you feel or how things look. You boldly confess, I am who God says I am. I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm a new creation. See yourself in him and make a bold confession and stick with it. No matter stick how things it. look, Hebrews 4.14 says, hold fast to your confession of faith. And Mark, you hold fast to your confession of faith in what God is doing about your family, your mate, whoever else, your too. Husband, We're your all wife, working together. Your children. Yes. <clears throat> the power of the blood. Yes. <clears throat> so go to markhankins.org. Free book, The Power of Identification with Christ. Free book. Go to markhankins.org. Free book. And you can download the free CDs or the free messages. Download them. Unlimited free uh, digital downloads. Also, um, pray about becoming a monthly partner. Or even if you just want to be a one-time partner, there's ways that you can give. You can text to give. You can go to the website and give there. You can mail an offering, whatever you feel like the Lord would have you to give to help us keep distributing the word, not only here, but in other countries. People are watching from all over the world. So <clears throat> this Galatians 6, 6 says, if you've been taught in the word, communicate back. And so it says to give back. And so you can steal information, never steal revelation. Something about giving that says, Lord, I received that word. It's true in my life. I'd Amen. like to sow a seed and give Amen. because I believe that word has changed me forever. And that helps us keep preaching and teaching the word around the world. So 
Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we just have one more day on identification with Christ, and it gets better every day, so you might not want to miss tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> uh, the material just keeps growing, and we've got a lot more to cover. So um, God richly bless you. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. right here from Louisiana, Alexandria, Louisiana. And until tomorrow, may God bless